All right, welcome back to another episode of The Untamed Life. It's Christine Jewell, and today I'm so excited and you know just really honored to be joined by one of my amazing, amazing clients and founder and CEO of Channel Bakers, Joshua Kreitzer. Josh is a powerhouse of a man. I really honor and respect him. I love how he shows up. Um, Channel Bakers is a retail media and e-commerce agency that he bootstrapped eight years ago. I'm going to dive into his story with him because I think it's <laughs> such a powerful, awesome story of inspiration, of vision, of things unfolding, of walking with the spirit, of the challenges that we face as leaders and entrepreneurs, the, the testing grounds um, that we all go through, right? The fires of refinement. So today, Josh and his team of 250 people around the globe manage over $250 million in advertising spend for clients like Hewlett Packard, Canon Camera, and many, many more. I absolutely love working with josh i love our conversations every week so we were riffing one day and i was like you need to come on this podcast so we can just be raw real wide open and just yeah have some conversations that might inspire and pierce some hearts and stir some things in the atmosphere for you guys so josh welcome i'm glad you're here hey thanks for having me hi <laughs> Hello. So I'm just going to start right. And I already gave you a little intro. You can talk more about your business in a second, but I always love to start with this question and you sent it to me in the bio. So we'll just start right there. But like what wakes you up in the morning? What makes you have the fire in your belly, in your soul to jump out of bed, head out there and just do one more day? Yeah. So uh, it's funny, but that, that idea of like, what gets you out of bed in the morning um, and why should anybody care? So that came from the Simon Sinek Golden Circle TED Talk. And like, there's so much good out of that TED Talk. But that was the one phrase that he said that like really struck a chord. It was, so why do you get out of bed in the morning? And why should anybody care? Mm -hmm. um, now, our company's core tenant, we have a manifesto because it's cool to have a manifesto versus like just one mission statement or vision statement. And there was like 13, 14 different key value statements. And the core tenant was we exist to help people, our audience is everyone we meet. And it kind of goes back to that. Like on the outset, for me, the audience I really wanted to help was um, channel sales, channel marketers uh, that manage very specific retail channels um, in a landscape where retailers were now all of a sudden using their search and their shopper behavior data to do advertising. Um, and it's just a whole new landscape and channel marketers, uh, this wasn't their, their talk track. This wasn't their language. So I was really excited because there's this new thing in the, in the world of retail. And I got to, I, I wanted to connect with them. What ended up happening was as I grew and scaled, um, cause I knew a lot of really big brands in the industry. And all of a sudden, like I needed to scale because I was sleeping on a yoga mat at the office till two o'clock yeah. in the morning. It was awful. Um, uh, but that's part of the journey. And all of a sudden I had like. 20, 20 something working for me. And I realized like, I've got a whole new audience of people I get to help. And uh, now again, it's over 250 people globally um, with offices all around the world. And it's really kind of cool because we built this culture that I'd like to say is centered on love and kindness. And right, even the 13 different aspects of value statements in our manifesto are centered around like the fruits of the spirit and other really awesome passages. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the fun part now. That's what does get me out of bed in the morning. Um, good days, rough days. That's what still drives me um, is the getting to teach, train, and mentor. And it used to be teach, train, and mentor millennials. Uh, yeah. so what I like to be called, like I like to call them phenomenal. <laughs> but ultimately. At the end of the day, it's not even that anymore because uh, it's Gen Z now as well. So um, it, this has been kind of a, this is what kind of more or less gets me out of bed in the morning outside of getting the opportunity to meet new people at new brands when we onboard new clients and then just pouring what value I can um, into them. And like my last thing I'll say is my favorite, outside of our core tenet of we exist to help people, our audiences, everyone we meet, my favorite is, and this is the one that I really try to drive home with my team is we genuinely care about the people we work with, not just the company they work for. And that's yes. important because it's really easy for them to go, well, I have the Samsung account or I have the Calvin Klein account. And at the end of the day, it's really about, or I have the McAfee account. Well, it's really about Christia 
at McAfee or John at McAfee. Both of those two people are amazing people. And um, tell me about them, right? And that's what I'm trying to help them focus more on these days is the relationship building uh, that comes from business. That we're in the people business, you know, that we're in the people to pe people, human to human, and we lose we have so lost that sometimes, but I, I believe it's coming back. I believe we're on the coming back around. So I love the mission. And I was going to ask you if it was but, uh, millennials, but you said phenomenals. I love yeah, it. I, Why, what, what's yeah. that word about? I love it. I've never heard that. Uh, before. No, I know. So that, I mean, maybe I should, I don't know. Yeah. I, I came up with that one day because I was like really blown away. I grew up doing things a certain way in industry. Um, I had my processes when it came to delivering our value to our clients and then you know these kids get in here and they were just blowing my mind with the ways that they do things differently yeah. and I was like and you're still delivering the value and in fact in some ways even delivering more than what the value was that I thought that we were supposed to be delivering because they did it in such a cool unique way and I was like that is totally phenomenal I was like mm. phenomenal it is that's phenomenal. really what they are They're phenomenal. Um, so not millennials phenomenals. <laughs> I love that. I so love that because the amount of conversations that I've had with leaders, with execs, with people that are still stuck trying to do things the old way, you know, their way, like terrified yeah. of releasing control, terrified of handing over the reins. Mm. And like, that really is like, it's beyond just a bottleneck. It's, it's just creates such dissension, I think, you know, internally. And always rooted in fear. You guys know I'd love to talk about the roots of fear that come in there. But I think that's so cool. I heard something yesterday as I was driving home on a 12 hour car ride from Canada back down. I moved my mom from Canada to the US, but it was just, you know, it's like anytime you step into the next level of blessing, the next level of abundance, the next level of growth, you know, or expansion, I don't, you know, I, next level is kind of one of those things. I like to say deeper, wider, whatever, right? It's like we move into a new realm and when I want to share, I want you to share your story in a minute, but anytime yeah. we kind of do this leap into a new realm, into a new space, whatever that word is for you, next levels, deeper levels, wider, you know, new networks, it requires a whole new way of doing things. Like the old system doesn't work anymore. It breaks, right? And it's like our, our little, we try to hold on so much to the old ways. And it is, I mean, I think it requires a massive amount of faith. Um, but I'm just curious, even before you talk about your story, like, yeah, what, how do you like be okay with that? Like you, is it just the fact that you've seen them, you've seen what they produce and like now you, you've you normalized that? It's like, okay, I can trust them. Or do you still find yourself ee, gripping? And <laughs> I, I, just, I just wanted to say that and then I want to jump into your story for a second because I think a lot of people listening really it sounds great when we're sitting here talking about it, doing it. Yeah. When we think we have a better way is completely a different story. Uh, yeah. So the question is, uh, how have I let go and what evidence have I seen that it's going to be okay? Yeah. How do you continue <laughs> to lean into this operating system that's like, oh, yeah, they actually might even have a better way and create something even more epic if I just get out of the way, which I think is the one thing. There's so much there, right? Our ego gets yeah. in the way and we're afraid of losing stuff. But what what's one of the ways that you've been able to really navigate that or, you know, be successful in that? Honestly, obviously, knowing that you're human and you probably have struggled with it, too. <laughs> A hundred percent still do. I mean, yeah. still, still do to this, this day. Right. I think on the outset, um, there was evidence that they, so let me pause for a second. What I'm breathing here are marketers, right? It's yes. helping a brand or a company identify new strategies, new tactics using, you know, retail and advertising to be able to reach you know, people that they want to sell their product to um, in different ways. So yeah. I've always been a product enthusiast who like to look at just about any product and go, okay, like this is exactly how we're going, the messaging we're going to have about this product or um, I'll do research beforehand and identify who the competitors are and kind of find value props, their product against the others. Like 
all of that expertise that has taken me 20 plus years. And it really, for me, began when I worked at retail in a, you know, retail store selling electronics back at Circuit mm -hmm. City back in the day, mm -hmm. right? And then identifying audiences that like, okay, what's the messaging that's going to be relative, relevant to a soccer mom buying a um, 1998 Hewlett Packard with a 64 megabyte hard drive? I know that sounds archaic, but like then I go, okay, well, she doesn't need the $10,000 computer. She needs the $500 computer. And then I need to sell her like an extra backup drive because what she's really here for is pictures of her kids digitally, right? right? right. All right. of that is what I was like really concerned to hand the reins over right. to you know, a younger generation. Right. And there was just evidence after evidence that they, they understood that. And they were also thinking about different ideas and strategies on how to get that message across, not just to people of my age, but obviously their age too, which is the future shopper of tomorrow. So it became like hyper relevant, not only just to, to people of my age and above, let's just say uh, Gen X and boomers and so forth. They were like being also hyper relevant to the next generation of shoppers. That's when I knew. That's when it was like, okay, got it. And then also everything else we do is centered around the reporting that comes with it to tell the data story. Yeah. And they were shaping new data stories that I hadn't even thought of. And I was like, yes, that perfect, great. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, I just started to see evidence after evidence, and it started to build up uh, confidence. In fact, I I talked to my team um, about the glass wall of confidence. Um, this might be a fun one to get into if you want me to, but I can come back to it later if you'd like. Mm -hmm. But there's a, this, there's a wall of confidence that people have in each other. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, our goal is to make it bulletproof. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, like there might be pebbles thrown at it. There might be rocks thrown at it. There yeah. might be stones thrown at it. But the more evidence that you build up with your new relationship, whether it's a business relationship, a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you name it, right? The more evidence makes that glass more bulletproof so that if a boulder hits it, then it's gonna be fine. If it gets shattered, it's irreparable. Yeah. If there are cracks, cracks are harder to repair, but they are repairable, right? But the whole point is they began to show more and more evidence that built this um, really strong window pain of confidence that I had in them. And the more evidences I saw, the more at peace I was about handing over the reins. Yeah. And then, you know, then yeah. it's the next, confidence next thing. Confidence creates momentum, right? It yeah. keeps going. I love that you brought that up. And the, the fact that like, you do need evidence to have that trust built over time. Like it's, you know, it's, 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 it's the yes and it's the yes and that we talk about all the time. I love how you said like there, it's like, yes, they met your need and they added to it. It was the yes and, and they showed yeah. me a new, a new clientele to reach. Yes. And they also created new stories. Yes. And, and that's like, I, I, you know, you and I talk a lot about evidence. I talk about that on the show. I talk about with clients is, is training ourselves to see, to look for the positive, the evidence of it working, of it growing, of them adding, because our brains are wired, hardwired <laughs> to look for what's not working. Look how people are yeah. screwing up. Look what they're not doing that we're asking. And it's so easy to fall into the, you know, the the micromanaging or the controlling or seeing what we don't want to see. I mean, like we know this, right? Like, so what we focus on, we continue to grow. So I love that. Um, training yourself, probably you didn't even realize you were doing it, to train yourself to continue to see that evidence to create that bulletproof confidence, which I think is so cool, like that bulletproof confidence concept, you know? And it really is our responsibility. Um, I hate it when people say like, I don't have any confidence, or I don't, I'm lacking confidence. I'm like, no, you just aren't paying attention and you are not cultivating confidence that is you're putting your confidence in something else. That's why you're not feeling it because your focus is on what's outside of you, right? Instead of like, ah, oh, there's evidence. There's evidence, that, there's evidence that keeps bolstering. So, um, and the other thing you said, I wanna circle back to, because I think it's important is you said, when I asked you like, where are you, what's enabling you to let go? What's empowering you to let go, allowing you is that you know what you're creating. You said, I know what I'm creating in my people. I'm creating marketers. I'm creating basically like, right, you know, yeah what you're creating. And I wanted to tap back on that because that's another thing that we 
hit a lot on through either the coaching and stuff that we do or the conversations I have with people or a lot of leaders that are, when I ask them, like, what are you actually consciously creating? Are you clear? Are you clear what you're creating? I'm shocked at how many people don't have the answer to that. Have not taken the time to step back and identify that and to get clear. And I know that you're really good about, you know, taking that step back to look at the big vision and, and stuff like that. I want to back up a little bit and maybe we're bouncing all over the place, but we'll see. I want to, sh I want you to share your story because now there's all this talk out there about like, Oh, the world's coming to an end. There's a recession. I don't know. I don't listen to this stuff. I really am very conscious of where I put my energy and my focus, but you're in a totally different place today. Definitely emotionally and spiritually. I think that you were, you know, before and in your business and everything, you're just in a different position and a different state of consciousness. So I would love for you to share a little bit of your story for yourself, the business, and also like you and Katie, I have the privilege of coaching both of you as a couple, which I, I have loved to see and hear your journey from where you were and how you guys were able to navigate it. honestly, like together through that, because that's stuff that breaks people. Yeah. You know, all right, let's go. So you, you, you want me to make sure that I, when I tell this story also include Katie being right there with me through the whole thing. Yeah. Of course, because this is, isn't that part of the deal, right? Like imagine yeah. if we were going alone. And I think that's part of the message here too, is like, we are not designed to go alone people, but you go, whatever's on your heart, just riff, like whatever the spirit leads you to share, whatever your heart wants to say, bring it. All right. So, you know, um, you know, one of the, uh, I heard this, I heard this pastor once, uh, sharing a message, one of the greatest tricks the uh, devil tries to play on us is to get us to build our own kingdom. Uh, mm -hmm. And for me, that was centered around my career. Uh, I built my entire identity of who I was on my career and the career accolades. And this is one of those other stories where I try to help my team understand, like, it's not about title. And I was pursuing VP of e-commerce and director of e-commerce. And like, this is, this is what I was after. Um, and through our, my journey, I got to like this really cool company that was like all oh, doing like esports and gaming before it was a thing. And uh, now they're a pretty big brand. And then I, I got the Amazon account taken away from me <clears throat> because there was a layoff at HP and one of the uh, funding, funding sources of a new product line for this company I was working at. Um, he was from HP, so he brought all his people with him when he brought his funding for this new product line. And that meant that all of them got to cherry pick everything out of the existing uh, clientele. And my account was Amazon and I was growing at zero to 22 million in the first three years. And wow. um, getting a lot of kudos and a lot of praise within the organization, salesman of the year, all these things, right? And then they took it from me. And that was the beginning of, um, I almost wanna say the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey, but not, not really because it kind of began before that doing multi-level everything. And like, I tried to do everything I could because I kept saying to myself, like I'm an entrepreneur stuck in an employee's career. Um, <laughs> and then I literally found a Facebook post, like a time hop that popped up. And like, I said that in 2009. Yeah. Uh, but what ended up happening through all of that was I lost that account and I was a wreck. And then I just went on a mission to go find something else. I eventually ended up at GoPro, but 2007, 2008, 2009, if you all recall, that was the last big recession that we all kind of went through. Um, and Katie had lost her job and my job wasn't sufficient enough to continue to pay for everything. So we went through the loss of all our things as a couple, like we lost the house, um, which was really, really hard for Katie, obviously. Um, and I will tell you though, that, that experience and being up there near, uh, you know, in that home, it was good because my stepmother, uh, who passed away in January of 2015, um, was our next door neighbor for about five years. So I got to spend her last five years as her next door neighbor with my dad and all of the things And my dad got to spend, my dad and I got to spend a ton of time with all. Yeah, that's awesome. So for her, um, you know, she also lost her home, right? And that's, that's oftentimes um, women in a relationship want security from their spouse, right? And that was obliterated. Um, we lost our savings. Like all we had left yeah. was a minivan, <laughs> which had a ridiculous car payment on it. Um, and then I had to go, like I built a little website to 
pitch us as a couple and our family so that we could get into a new home because our credit had been destroyed and we had to rent from somebody. So all of that took place back then. Um, and that was really God's way of humbling me quite a bit, right? I had to go through this humbling. Um, but then when it came to my title and pursuing my career, I got to um, the action camera company GoPro. And they were very anti-Amazon, but that's what people usually hire me for is the internet retail accounts, mm -hmm. Amazon or like a, a Best Buy.com or Costco.com. Right. Any kind of retail.com is what I've always been hired for. And I was like the third Amazon guy in the span of like 18 months. So my first day on the job, I had to tell the previous Amazon guy that I was the new Amazon guy. How about that? And that was my first tack of my first day on the new job. It's just not a great working environment for anybody who touched the Amazon account. I was always so envious of like all the other people at GoPro that were just crushing it and having an awesome time. And I was like, oh, I wanted to have that. Anyway, neither here nor there. Then I got fired for the first time in my career. Like the one big fear I've always had in my career was like, I never want to be unemployed. <laughs> and then God's like, no, you're not only going to be unemployed, but you're also fired. <laughs> and so I ended up being, um, you know, unemployed for six months, but Something I also tell my team is uh, I used to journal like all my like little wins. Um, and when it came to LinkedIn and, and writing a resume, especially when you're unemployed, you're writing like your resume 10 different ways for 10 different job positions. I kind of leaned into those, those daily wins and like I was able to like reshape my value statement for being a marketer or being in sales or e-commerce or what have you. But that actually began to help me put together like an entire business plan and strategy for launching my own company. I ended up getting another job. It was a nightmare. I did get director of e-commerce and uh, they made me drive four hours each way uh, to work um, in the heart, in the worst of LA traffic. So I went from like uh, San Bernardino County all the way out to like Ventura. Uh, so it was just kind of a, a rough commute. And that was just God humbling me a little bit further with regard to chasing a title. It's like, I'm gonna wean out of you the very last bit. Uh, and so, was this before uh, or after you lost the house? Hold on, I need to know. Was oh, this it, all after the house. This, this is, is after. All, okay, so yeah. you're fired. You don't have your house. You yeah. have the minivan in a video. You're trying to get people to get you leasing a home, and you are still chasing the title because you're hard headed. Because Fine. right? <laughs> because <laughs> yes, a lot of us are like we don't get the lessons. Yeah. So we keep going back to summer school, and yeah. here you are. And it's well, that's like, a okay. great way to put it because <laughs> that nightmare that I was living through driving yeah, for back and forth, was actually in summer, the so summer school. Great. Oh I'm going to use that. <laughs> okay. Right, so here we are again. Uh, yeah. lesson yet again. Then I got a really cool job. Um, and I, the CEO and I were best friends, like that guy. And I still talk to this day. I'm going to be talking to him in about three hours from now. Really awesome job. Um, but they didn't do anything with regard to this. Uh, oh, Oh my gosh, the silver lining story to my GoPro story was that I got to beta test Amazon's paid search platform. In my head, it was like, okay, Amazon's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Google. This is going to be awesome. Uh, Amazon advertising today is so much more like streaming TV ads and Thursday night football. And that's what I talk about in all of my you know, speaking engagements today and audio ads is that Amazon is a channel of influence versus just a retailer and channel of conversion. But I got to beta test Amazon paid search. So that was kind of like the silver lining story in it flash forward to when I started the company, you know, two years later, uh, it's a really strong and powerful narrative that I've been in Amazon's ad product solutions for companies about a year and a half before they ever launched it. Um, so that's that. Um, now coming back to just this idea of like, okay, I had this really cool job and um, I kind of got re my batteries recharged, if you will, they didn't have anything to do with you know, Amazon and that uh, advertising platform. And I wanted to go back to that. So uh, I pitched the idea of building an Amazon division to the CEO who, again, are, he and I are still very good friends. And um, he couldn't put a, a package. His narrative is that he couldn't put together a package that was lucrative enough for me. Um, so I just quit the day job and started the company. And um, you kind of hit, you mentioned it earlier, but now we're like 250 employees globally. We've got this amazing culture. Um, centered on love and kindness. And yeah, we do about a quarter billion a year in ad spend and have driven, I don't know, probably seven or $8 billion worth of sales now across 
internet retailer. So that's the journey there. There's the story in a nutshell. But, the, but in the beginning when you were doing it, I love it because it kind of skipped over that really fast. So What's it was that? like you were hitting roadblock, 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 roadblock. And then you finally decided to go out quote unquote on your own. Yeah. I want you to talk about those gorilla days for a second. Like I, I, I'm really passionate about this specific topic of when we are so, you know, some people call it the burn the boats moment. Maybe, you know, like there is no plan B, but I think there's more to it than that. Like that might be the push, but there's also, I think something more that's like, we are so surrendered or, you know, willing to, we're so willing, we're so wide open. Like, well, you know, what, what, what's different about our state, in your opinion, your state, when you were there that really allowed, allowed, you know, the business to take off. I mean, $250 million and 250 employees is not a little thing to yeah. So, So like what, because hmm. I think like, if we think about what is the essential ingredients that we are, weren't conscious of, that yeah. were part of that, that were planted and watered and cultivated every day that really allowed, I believe, like God to really like show up in some big ways so that you guys could co-create this thing. Yeah. All right. Well, then I'm going to touch on that for a second. So yeah. uh, this stems back to my amazing parents. Um, so my my mom, I still like I, I say this all the time, like I'm trying to be who my mom to this day still is with regard to her intent and purpose in life is to go out every single day and just make people feel special. Mm -hmm. That is who she is. And I mean, to the nth degree. So she, I did, I got to, I got to see this and live it. So my mom and dad yeah. got divorced when I was six. And um, I got to see my mom go through being a single mom. We were living in a basement of some a family at the church that we were going to took us in and, um, She's got a phenomenal story of going from, you know, just waiting tables at this family's restaurant to cover the, you know, just to, as a, a make good on getting to live in their yeah. basement for a minute yeah. to herself having 20 homes, working for a billionaire, all this. But her, her passion for people is yeah. what is one of the ingredients. Okay. Um, my dad is, it's always taught me integrity and principle. Uh, and then my stepmom is just one of those amazing people who, um, like I mentioned, is no longer with us, but her name is Debbie. And she always had this, she, she always, every time I called her, I, I freaked out because I'm definitely to this day still high strung and, you know, stress out every now and then and all the things. Um, I would call her like, Debbie, I got, I, got, I got two job opportunities. I don't, I don't know which one to take. I know these people, but the money is not as good, but I, this money over here is really bad. I don't know. She stopped me dead in my tracks. She goes, dear Jesus open the doors you want Josh to walk through and slam <laughs> shut the doors you don't want him to walk through because his poor little heart can't take it. In Jesus name, amen. Um, so how are the kids? Yeah, right? that's enough. And <laughs> that's all the worry we get to do for that, okay? On right? to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So, so those, those varying different agreements, my dad with principle and integrity and my mom with just passion for people and, and Debbie with her just cut it, shut it down, give it to God and let it go. Um, you know, all of that are the, the kind of those key ingredients that absolutely got watered and seeded while I was unemployed. Uh, I will tell you that I love riding bicycles and that's where like all these ideas started to like piece together. So, um, those okay. would be the ingredients. Okay. I want to rehash. I want to re like re tap on those touch back on these because I love this exercise. I think you guys listening, this is such a powerful exercise. If you think back to the times in your life when we were like, things were opening, doors were opening, things were getting reorganized. Maybe we saw them, maybe we didn't really recognize what was happening at the time, you know, cause a lot of it isn't looking back. We're like, dang, what? There's like all these miracles happen. They had to happen and line up in that perfect timing. And we had to walk, but like, it's never what we think it, the ingredients I think are never, not I think, I know the ingredients are never what we think the ingredients need to be, right? It's like, okay, passion for people, show up, make people smile every day. You and I have had so many conversations about that, right? Yep. We've talked about the pandemic effect on mental health and like disconnecting from people, disconnecting from that secret ingredient and all of a sudden how hard business gets. So, our, you know, being in the passion for people and that's your gift. and. The integrity, being in integrity, which I want to come back to in a minute, in principle. Number three, you said 
Well, Debbie, I'm going to go Debbie decides to give it to God, let it go. I mean, yeah. like give it to God, let yeah. it go. Let's move on, you know, move on to the yeah. next topic. I know you and I've had many conversations about that because we're always in the testing of that. We're always in the trials of that. Like I'm still, you know, in it myself too. And the fourth one is I want to say this too. You and I've had many conversations about the riding the bikes, mountain biking or getting on the spin bike or getting on mm -hmm. the road bike because then it's like, I believe, honestly, you guys listening as a high performance coach, like I do believe that this is kind of the icing on top is like, then go do what lights you up, go do what's fun. Once you yeah. get those basic ingredients in, you want the frosting, you want the cherry, go do you go do whatever it is, you know what? And I, we're both cyclists, so I'd love it, you know, but downhill skiing, like, and when we give ourselves that space, I believe, and I'm curious your thought on this, like to me, that is the spaciousness. That's like the secret place where everything starts, like the downloads start locking into play. We start really receiving. We may or may not know what to do with it yet, but man, the amount of answers that come through. And to me, that's like the war room or the lab or the secret place where we go in and it's like, all right, I got these ingredients. Like this is the really like the temperature and the cooking and the, everything happens in that place. It doesn't happen around a boardroom. And I wanted to really, I love that you added that in Josh, because I think that that's the piece that a lot of us leave out, especially yep. when things start really rocking and we're getting in the momentum and we're traveling and you're having meetings and there's like this demand and that demand. And it's easy to like, be like, okay, well, that's a luxury. That's a necessity, you know? But I love that you added that in. No, I'd say the challenge I think all of us face is prioritizing it. Uh, I still struggle with that. I mean, I hate to say this out loud, but I, I bought an e-bike because <laughs> I, e my legs my legs aren't what they used to be. And like the purest cyclist in me dies with every pedal assisted electronic e-bike pedal stroke. But but having said that, it does get me back out there. And the fact that yeah. I, I went for a two hour bike ride yesterday and for me to do a two hour bike ride again without an e-bike is my, uh, impossible. But getting back outdoors, like, I mean, there's a couple even posts that I did on, like I take my birthday every year to make sure I'm on a bike. And in one of those, this past year, I actually was on my bike, just all the, all the emotions of like love and gratitude just overwhelmed oh. me while I was out yeah. on the bike. And I recorded a video and I gave my entire team my birthday off. Um, and it, so I gave them a free day off just because of my heart was so full. Like I was actually back out there again. This is also you know coming right out of the pan or still somewhat in the pandemic where like, just to even be able to get back on my bicycle and get back out um, was really powerful. But I think it's a matter of prioritizing it, even if you have to get an e-bike uh, or whatever it is for you. Because right? it's for not me. about the bike riding, right? It's about yeah. what happens while you're on the bike. It's about what you tap into while you're on the bike, while you're on the road. I mean, I used to be a triathlete. I used to run copious amount, long distance, long distance. And I remember the days where if it wasn't like a minimum of like, you know, 10 miles, I was like, oh, that was a waste of a workout, you know? <laughs> and it was like, now I'm like happy if I run three miles, I think it's like a massive win, but it wasn't about the distance. It wasn't about the technique. It wasn't about the fancy, you know, racing bike. It was about getting out there and being in the motion, moving that energy, unlocking. To me, like when we move into that space, we are unlocking some massive, portals. I love that word portals because they're doorways, they're gates that give us access to things that we don't have access to when we're walking around our kitchen or driving and talking on, the, yep. you know, whatever it is, or on a zoom call, like we just literally have unlocked access to the, you know, either through the heart, through the mind, through different parts of our bodies, whatever that all of a sudden it's like, boom, there it is. And it's so clear and it's so easy and it's so powerful that that inspiration hits and then you take action. And I really love, I'm so passionate y'all listening about, we get to be in this space as the norm. Like what if this is the basis for everything we create? Cause then the execution is honestly, it's easy. But you know, one of the things is like, so we've talked about these keys to success 
And by the way, I think I'm inspired to do a podcast on portals. So I'm going to do one on like, I'm right. on <laughs> but like this is what you just said is it gets you back to your heart because you're so overjoyed. You're so overflowed that all of a sudden, what did you do? You went right back to your secret ingredient number one, which is passion for the people. Because I'm so full, it naturally has to go somewhere. I can't keep it to myself. Like you can't possibly hold on to it. So what do you have to do? You have to stop and record and do a video or you have to stop and tell your staff that they get a day off. Like it is just a natural byproduct of when we're in this state. As we are filled up, it has to go somewhere. You know, it's not yeah. something we can hoard. So the cool thing is if we want to live from it, I'm riffing a little, okay, I'm moving into preacher mode, but I believe like, if we want to live from that place of overflow and we want it to be easy to create value, we want it to be easy to connect with people. We want it to be easy to make that video or whatever it is, make that decision. It's like, go to the place where it easily flows from you. Right. Yep. And that is the key. So we talk, we're, and I, I'm like right there. Um, I'm so excited to go downhill snow skiing this winter. I'm so excited. Woo! I just got my Epic pass. All right. We talking about keys to success. I also want to talk about, you know, the fuckery. <laughs> you and I have talked about it a lot. It's like, because we get in these places and things are working and doors are opening and like, call it divine timing, divine order. You know, I don't believe in coincidences, but things are, you're like in flow state, right? And all yep. of a sudden, it's like <clears throat> friction, speed bump, slam, cosmic boxing match. I use all these terms, right? And all of a sudden, you're like getting your ass kicked again. And, and, and you're like, what, what just happened? What, what just happened? So I would love, I talk about this a lot on the podcast, but I think that we have to come back to our humanness and the fact that like, it's awesome. And it feels amazing to be in this flow state. And we do amazing jobs at getting in the way of flow <laughs> and tapping back into the things that create resistance you know, in our lives, in our business, in our body. So I want to, I want, I would love for you to share, you know, what's some of the fuckery here that in your own experience, as you've continued to grow and navigate and your business keeps transforming and evolving and you might still be holding on to old ideas or old ways, like what puts you into that space of contraction that disconnects you from, from the flow, right? And what are some of the, like, you know, you can be very precise, very tactical if you want to, because I really, you you know, I believe that when we identify it, then we know now we're opting in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and everyone has a version of these. So let's not pretend like we don't have them. But what are the things that block the flow, block you to be in this space of overflow um, of just, you know, alignment and where everything starts getting freaking hard, stressful, slow, because yeah, I would love for you to share. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it, it has always been, it's always been fear. Uh, and then fear uh, causes some, some, if you allow it to, you some can cause complacency. And then one, then coming right off of complacency is guilt. And then coming off of guilt comes shame. It ends up being like this downward spiral and then like, I had every intention this morning of creating like four videos for the team, for the clients and a training video or two, right? And all that gets just bought because some trigger gets me into a fear state instead of a creative state. Um, and I definitely feel so <laughs> appreciative of my creative team who's like, so is he, is he good today? Right? And that is a bad, bad, you know, place to be where your team has to question is he, is he doing good today because we have like five videos four videos we have to create and then did, did fear trigger me to get into like a negative state right and that's what we talk about all the time it's like how do I stay consistently in my creative state right and my creative state is my happy place and the, what triggers the happy place to combat the fear state is yeah natural endorphins coming from exercise and my yeah. number one choice in exercise is cycling Right? It's getting out on a bike, whether it's a mountain bike or a road bike. Um, and so that's, yeah, it's, it's usually to answer that in a long roundabout Josh like way. Uh, it's fear. It's yeah. always a fear trigger. Fear of what? Fear of what? What are some of the tactical, hmm. like, because, you know, I think people think, oh, when I get to a certain place, when my company does X million dollars, I'm not going to have this fear anymore. When I do 10 million, <laughs> when we do 20 million, 
when we have the Ferrari or the Porsche or the things or the boats, right? Because let's be, you have some pretty, you've had some pretty amazing toys, but like, does it go away? Like, this is the thing that is so interesting as I, and I, and we know it, we know the answer, but we actually, there's a part of us that believes that we'll have licked it. Like, it just doesn't go away, right? So like, what is the fear still, even in the place? And it doesn't mean that you have to be engulfed by it, but it still shows up. Like he rears its ugly head. The triggers try to tempt us, to bait us. And you and I talk a lot about the bait, but what is some of the bait or the fears, you know, that show up? Yeah. I want to say um, at the top or in the seat of a CEO or, you know, and ultimately they're human fears, you know, because we're human, so we all have them. But what are some you know, of the uh, so there's there's a couple things. One, there's still scar tissue from the last recession, right? Mm -hmm. And that scar yeah. tissue lends itself to the idea that I'm gonna lose it all again and I'm gonna be destitute and yeah. living out of a minivan. Uh, or, or the only thing I own in life is a minivan that I owe, you know, a stupid amount of money on. Uh, yeah. that's one. Um, the other is and the second I say this word, you're gonna you're gonna go crazy. My competitors, <laughs> I, see, there it is. My competitors are going to steal my people or steal my clients, and like, um, and there's there's that fear, right? Like that that is always rearing its its ugly head. Um, and then there's, um, I guess the other one would be just relevancy. Um, is the value I'm adding still the most relevant thing that's top of mind today? And you mentioned it earlier, like I'm in an industry where literally last week I was in New York at an Amazon event and they launched seven new products. We're currently part of 39 betas. Um, some of them, which we kicked off with Amazon. Um, but at the end of the day, like we're moving so fast that it's very easy to get um, caught up in, in in, I don't know if you've ever been knocked over by a wave and you're just rolling around. Like it's very easy in our world to, for that to happen because things are moving so sure, fast and then you've got Google and Facebook and other platforms trying to keep up. And so then they're pushing new things. And like all of a sudden there's so much new that you want to make sure that you're in front of your clients and your people talking about all the latest and greatest new things. So it's, um, it's a fear of getting left behind. It's the fear of losing my fear, of, you know, losing my people or my clients and then it's like the ultimate big scary fear is like will i end up like i was way back yeah yeah in the day a decade ago yeah. right so yeah. that's okay, uh so those are big ones I, i'm gonna highlight those again because we're gonna tag back to these because i i think like i have them you have them we all have them the yep. question is how long how long do we entertain them and how long do we stay in the place and you and i've done some fun exercises and work and conversations around this but like okay i heard you say we look at the scar we look at the scar we you know the wound y'all listening is like that wound if it's open and it's gaping it's hurting right like it we got to fix it we got to sew it up we got to do surgery on it we got to clean it out we got to do the work but if we're staring at our scars and we're sitting around the table and we're like looking at our scar and then remembering the painful story of it instead of like wow this is how we overcame that right like the stories we're telling ourselves about the scars and i talk you know talk to the battle warriors out there we are warriors you know we 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 have scars you're gonna if you are an entrepreneur we're gonna be full of them we're like scars everywhere i had this studio i looked at my legs the other day i used to have those boxes in the studio those that you do box jumps on the oh. amount of like shin you know where i just have mm. torn my entire like on my left leg i don't think there's any like normal mm. <laughs> colored skin on the front of my shin. I have a lot of stories to remember, but if it's like, as you drop in to looking at those scars, like what story are we telling about that? Are we telling the story of the victory? Are we telling the story of how God showed up? Are we telling the story of the gifts or are we telling the story of like the fear that we were in, you mm -hmm. know? And, and I want to just put that out for everyone because we all tell stories. We're storytellers. We love to tell 
stories. And I, you know, um, misery loves company too. I will have to say this because when I ran that women's retreat or I, you know, you listen, you go out for dinner. You, all you need to do is like tune into the table next to you and listen to how many people are sitting around bitching, sharing. <laughs> if somebody has a story, they have a worse story. <laughs> they have a worse story. And it's like, fudge, you know, what stories are we recounting? So thank you for being raw and real about that. And I know we continue to work on that. The second thing, and I know we, we Mar like Josh and I joke a lot about this because I'm always <laughs> like, what is the relationship we have with our quote unquote competitions, our adversaries who are really our allies who are there to strengthen us. But when we're looking sideways, man, whoo, yeah. that's a trigger. And I, I totally will be also you guys listening. I will raise my hand that I fall into this. Big time. This is probably one of my biggest ones is when I look sideways and I look at what someone else is doing and then I start comparing their speed to my speed or their progress or like I should be there or I should be maybe should be doing that. And it automatically is like, boom, instantly it disconnects me from how God is leading me to do it, whether it's marketing in my business, a message I'm supposed to share. It disconnects me from the season I'm in. I just want to share this because for me, too, it's like. Right now, I can feel myself going through a fall, a little bit of winter. There's a lot of reflection. I can feel things organizing. And I'm looking sideways at other people that are like spring and summer, and they're they're hitting the ground with different things. But I'm in a season of recalibrating many things because I can tell the new things coming. And if I'm impatient and I'm not honoring where I'm at, then I don't get the downloads. I'm going to have to go back to summer school. You know, so it's like... And then when it's go time, like I've been in yeah. that spring and summer season and I'm like, I know it's go time and it's head down and look forward and go. And if I try to go sideways and look at what other people are doing, like it, that, the smash is bad. You know, it's like you're driving fast and you're like, I'm not supposed to go that way, you know? And so I just wanted to share also my raw and realness here that you guys, like everyone thinks, oh, you're so confident and you're so, and I'm like, yes. And the reason why is I've had to do so much work. Yeah. I'm like turning the other cheek not just when somebody slaps you but it's like don't look that way we're going this way we're going this way we're you know look forward um so the trigger there is looking sideways and the story we're telling ourselves about that competition and what it says about us when really it has nothing to do with us it has everything to do with just what they're there here i am What's my lane? What am I doing? What are we yep. being called to do? You know, um, the other two you said is questioning your value, which is huge. And, you know, I want to tap into that for a second. And then the last one you said is fear of all the things, you know, like getting caught up in the pace. We get caught up in the wave. We get caught up in the speed of things. We get caught up in the rat race. We get caught up and we are no longer setting the pace, the internal pace, the external is setting the internal pace. Um, and that, I think this is a huge area of mastery, actually, like a massive area of mastery to be able to slow down our internal world when the external world is still like, you know, like you're getting tumbled around in the wave and instead of getting frantic and going, oh, I can't breathe. When am I going to come up? You're like, you can breathe. Mark and I were in uh, Costa Rica t a summer and a half ago. I don't know, whatever. We went white water rafting. We were in like those five, you know class five rapids and of course they tell us like there's a high probability your boat is gonna flip over everybody that wants you know so of course we're like we want to be in the boat that flips over <laughs> so <laughs> we're like we'll go you know and mark and i sit right in the front well what do you think happens the boat flips over i smash my knee into a rock and we're underneath this this boat and i and i remember that moment underwater and there's like this decision it's such a micro instant decision of am i gonna freak out and be like oh my god I'm bleeding. I hit something. I'm going to drown. Or is it like, can I just you almost like drop into like a slow motion and just let the water move and let it carry you and lift your legs up. And whether you're a surfer, whether you're a cyclist on a mountain bike, doing downhill mountain biking, like we've all had that moment where it's yeah. like, shit, this bike is going a lot faster than I feel comfortable with or shit. These skis are going a lot faster in the trees or shit. And it's like, yeah, this mastery practice of, knowing when we're getting caught up in it. So I'm really glad you brought those up. I think they're very relevant. And I'm curious what the trigger is for you about the the questioning the value. Like what what is the trigger that gets you to start going, oh, am I am I adding enough value? Am I still relevant? Like what is what do you think you're focused on in that moment that brings that doubt in? Um Yeah, I, 
what are the triggers then is the question well i think this is something that we struggle with a lot too you know it's like am i still adding a lot of value do i still matter like am i still you know, and part of that obviously might be you. And part of it is also like we genuinely have this huge heart to serve. We're artists. Right. We want to pour the gifts like and we want to I believe like it's a, a yes. And, you know, there's a little bit of ego in there, but there's also this like really desire to really be in step and pour and give. And I do believe this is where the enemy likes to attack us because the enemy knows the gift. The enemy knows the value of the testimony of the gift. The enemy knows that when you are pouring value into people, shit happens, good stuff happens. And if it, and I believe like when the that those seeds get planted in whatever ways and we give in, we stop adding value. We stop bringing it or we water it down or we're afraid of getting canceled or we're afraid of mm. having the conversation. So what are the... What are some of the triggers? I'm, you know, like I could think of one right away, but I want to hear what yours is. I'm going to share one that's raw and real for me. Um, yeah, actually, rather than tell you what the triggers are, I'll tell you what the portal is. Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn, right? <laughs> we've, we've talked about this, right? Yes. Like LinkedIn is, is, is evolved today into something different. It's turned into more of a social media platform than a professional networking platform. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, to your point, like it's, it's sometimes I'm there when I'm there, sometimes it's a trigger coming from a competitor or it's a trigger from whatever it might be. Right. Like that is the, that's the minefield for yeah. me actually. Yeah. So that for me is uh, that's, that's the quote unquote portal, if you will. It's the, it's the, it's the minefield that I'm navigating. And when you mention um, those, those raw moments where I'm going too fast or I hit my knee and I got to put this back over and I have a, like in that moment, I have to decide what side of the coin, if you will, am I going to embrace right now? Is it the yes. good for them and what they just did? Or is it the, oh my gosh, I didn't do that or my post wasn't about that before their post about that or whatever, you know, whatever it might be. It might be a new whatever feature. That, is. Right, right. So for me, it's like, oh, there's a new feature launched and I didn't announce it before my competitor did. They did before me, damn yes. it. Right. Like, and then, so that's like that in that moment is when you have to, that's where the work becomes evident, right? Have I done the work to make sure that that's not going to trigger me into a negative state of which then derails the rest of the value I intended to add to the world today, right? And that's 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 my mind field, um, and or that's where the the, the fear, yeah. And we've talked about it before, right? It's there's so many things I want to say and put out, um, but there's fear of being canceled and like, what if I have to reword Smith five times over before I hit post? You know, all of that is just um, yeah. there. There it is. There. That was a long not answer. trusting was not trusting the guidance not trusting our gut not trusting ourselves and 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 then thinking like oh if someone else if that hit home for someone else then that somehow i missed out right like and i think this is part of our our lack you know collective consciousness that if one person's winning that means someone else is losing but i really i'm bringing us back to that if one person's winning, that's evidence that we can win too. That it's like, yes, and, you know, what does it look like when everyone's winning? What does it look like when, if it's possible for them, it's possible for me. So I'll take that blessing too and I'll receive it because I want to celebrate the more of that I see, the more I know is available. And I, I do believe that's a bit, that's a huge leap in, in consciousness from the world system to the kingdom system of prosperity and how inspiration works. Because isn't that what Inspira inspiration is is to move into the place of like we're inspired therefore we inspire others or we see something you know and we're like ah oh. like i tell you when i see those mastercraft ski boats on the lake i'm like that I, I mean there's a part of me that wants one now and it's like oh i wish i was on that boat and also i'm like oh yeah i'm getting a mastercraft ski boat you know because lord i will receive that too i will receive those memories on the lake and i will receive or whatever that is, right? But we move into like, oh, and I do believe that this is something that blocks us from the flow 
of blessing, of being inspirational, of adding value is that we look at it as they got something that I don't have access to instead of going like, oh, thank you. I will also receive that as evidence that it's possible, it's available, it works, and I will open myself up to it. Knowing that, you know, the way that they do it is going to be different than the way you do it. Like only one, there's only one Josh. Nobody can say what Josh says. Like, no, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, well, I, I really do think like what, what's meant for you. Like, I do believe that when whatever mission God has in your heart for your business and for you, like it's, it's there for you to deliver to the world. So as we wrap, I am curious, um, what are you really looking forward to? What are you excited about? This season of life here today, it's October 31st, 2022. Like, what are you really on fire for? I love to work with leaders who are really on fire for what they're doing in their industry. Leaders who are here to change the game, who want to lead different, love different, show up different. This is why I love working with Josh, you guys. Like, he's committed to doing it different in all areas. So I'm just giving you a little shout out, but this is what's cool. I, I get really excited about working with people like you that are doing different, right? And so I'm curious, what are you really excited about in this season of your life where you are positioned right now? What are you looking forward to? I'm going to tie it down to tie it back to just one word, and that is reconnection. Mm. Um we talked about this the other day and I, you encouraged me to put a social post out and all the things and I did, but it was centered around this one question that you asked me. And the question was, when you are your most true and authentic self, what are you doing? Yeah. Right. And my response was, I'm with people, I'm in a room, I'm adding value. I'm either yes. coaching or mentoring, or I'm sharing some new thing that's happening in the industry. Like that is that reconnection and getting back out there is what is the most you know, powerful uh, thing that I'm the most excited about. Yes, I could sit here and tell you all about what the shifts in the advertising industry and all that. Like I could go into that whole narrative right now, but I'm that's less exciting to me than getting in front of people again and reconnecting and high fives and hugs and all the things, right? That is what is the most exciting for me as we look towards this new season. The new season for me is getting back together. I mean, if you look right behind me, it's 8.07 a.m. Historically, this office would be packed full of people, but the motion sensor lights are off because nobody's walked through the front door. Yeah. Getting back together, and I'm not mandating my people come back, but now the question became, as we talked about the other day, it's where are my people? And my people meaning clients, friends, employees, where are they? And they're all out there virtually, as well as in person, of which... I have to make more of an effort behind my passion now of being in person with people. Uh, and that's, you know, that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to get back together with people in person and um, have fun, add value, um, create memories, all of the above. Yeah. There. I love it. I love, love, love it. Reconnecting with people. You know, guys, it's so simple, right? Reconnecting with people. It's so simple that our brain wants to complicate it and make it so much more difficult or whatever, keep you in this office doing all the things that disconnect you from people. And even since we had that conversation, I have seen you like, you know, like new rocket fuel underneath you. So I'm really, I'm really excited, Josh, really to see what what's in store, what's coming up as you move more and really not move into the space, but embrace just your place in the space and just bringing more of you, more of you um, to it. So I just wanna thank you for that. I wanna thank you also for being raw and real. Like when I ask my clients to come on, A, I think it's amazing because they're industry leaders, they're doing amazing things. I, you know, I just honor their dedication, their commitment. I honor your dedication, your commitment. I'm asking them to be raw and real on this show. Like, you know, so it's it's awesome. And I hope that it, it inspires you and it leaves a mark or stirs something inside of you. I think we talked about a lot of relevant, relevant things today. Um, I do want to wrap too with one, you know, maybe two last questions is because you do invest in yourself with coaching and mentorship. Obviously we work together. Like, and at the end of each show, I always tell people like, hey, if you're interested in mentoring, if you're interested in coaching, you want to take the journey further, you know, here's how you can reach out to me. But I'm curious as someone who invests in himself and even our journey together, like, what would you say the hmm. biggest, what is the biggest, 
what have you gained? What do you gain the most out of having this, you know, relationship? Because it is a relationship with a coach or a mentor, or even our work together. Like, because it, everything is about like your, you know, what are you? You're planting seeds. What are you harvesting? What are you coming back? So, what it, what is it providing for you as a leader, as a CEO, as a husband, a father? Um, why? Yeah. So here. Um... I'll be as, as brief as I can. So I have long invested in myself from reading hundreds of books and all the things going all the way back to high school. My mom made me read How to Win Friends and Influence People before I started my first day of freshman year of high school, right? So I've been long investing. I've also, like I mentioned, been part of uh, varying different multi-level marketing programs of which usually have a tape series or a book series or a CD series. And you have to listen and keep the motivation alive and all of the above. And I've always been a believer in the abundance mindset. I can always do more. I can always produce more. I love listening to you know motivational speakers like your Tony Robbins or your John Maxwells and like yes. all of that, right? In the fierce state, that has been challenging to remember who I am yeah. and how what I believe, right? So having a coach and a mentor, well, having I've got a number of mentors and I've got um, you as a coach and one other coach, and it's all about perspective for me. It's re, re it's a perspective shift. It's shifting my perspective back towards what I know I believe and who I believe I am mm -hmm. versus who fear says I am today. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's always about getting back to that me that I still identify as me because mm -hmm. that me also needs to be the guy that's empowering and helping the other people who now rely on me um, and that person who they all know um, and that is a problem to be quiet and silent because I'm letting fear dominate versus being who I need to be not just for myself but for everyone who depends on me uh, and that's why coaching like you help me get you help me remind myself of who I am and getting back to that by asking these like really powerful questions like when you're your most true and authentic self, what are you doing in that moment? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that just lit up all the things that I know I am, like who I am, what I, what my passion is and it's people and like, what am I doing with people? Like all of that. So that's their long answer to a short question. Sorry. I love it. I appreciate it and I receive it. And y'all, that is it, is like the perspective shift, being able to come back to ourselves, to your North Star, to what, to your clarity, right? And like, getting rid of that noise. And that's why I continue to work with mentors and coaches as well and, and invest, invest, invest. So Josh, I, I do really want to thank you because I think you dropped some awesome value bombs here. We'll, we'll be sharing some of these with you. <laughs> I, I took notes. So we'll drop some of these in the show notes as we go along. And so if you were to leave someone with one piece, a word of wisdom, a word of wisdom, an imparted word of wisdom from someone that is maybe you know, going through, struggling with all of these ways of the world, the ways of doing business in the world and wanting to really do things. I call it like making the leap from being a warrior of the world to a warrior of the heart that is doing it, I'm going to say God's way, you know, like the most aligned way. And I know that we're all in this process together, right? We're all at different yeah. stages. Sometimes we're totally embracing the world's ways. and But like, What's one word of wisdom, one gem that you can impart onto someone that is truly, you know, wanting to make this leap, curious about making this leap? Like, where do I start? How do I begin? You know, what anything that you that feels appropriate to you? What would you say to the younger version of you or maybe the current version of you who might be listening? Uh, here, it's really simple. It's win your morning, win your day. Mm. Uh, how I start my day, that routine. Um, I put in AirPods, I listen to music. Um, I do my own devotional and all the things. Like that whole morning process for me is critical to how I handle the rest of my day. And when I get kicked in the teeth midday, turning back to that process. And I kind of call it, um, I know it sounds so goofy and cliche, but I call it like my love tank. I need to fill up my love tank in the morning, just like fill, fill, yes. fill me with all the love and the gratitude and all the right feelings. Um, call it the fruits of the spirit, typically, right? Um, that 
um, love, joy, peace, kindness, right? Um, that I have to win my morning to win my day. Um, and I want to center it on, on love. And that's really how I get my day started. And even then, again, getting kicked in the teeth midday, right? That is how I go about doing it. I throw on my AirPods, I listen to some music and, and midday I go for a walk in the morning. I'm usually just find a nice quiet place. Um, and that's, that's, there's my tidbit. Yeah. That's your calibration. That's how you get plugged in. Amen to that. Like who, who owns your morning owns your day is really what I heard you say. And it's either going to be love or fear. So mm. I love what you exactly. just said there. Yeah, that's the exact way like, to put it. Love or fear. In, yeah, whoever owns my morning owns my day. Is it going to be love or fear? Um, so thank you for that. Thank you for being here with me. I appreciate you and you guys listening. We'll drop the links in the show notes of how you can connect to Josh. I'll let you share that real quick. How you can connect to myself if you're interested in learning more about coaching and mentorship. Josh, what is the quickest, easiest place for people to connect with you? Probably just LinkedIn. Um, okay. Just Joshua, and my last name's goofy to spell, but it's K R E I T Z E R. Yeah, there Joshua you have it. Kreitzer on LinkedIn. We'll drop that link in the show notes, you guys. Until next time, here's to loving fiercely and leading courageously. Bye for now.